if you would call the roll, please. Dr. Stevens. Thank you. Mr. Stennett. Ms. Mr. Beard. Is he not here? Mr. Blevins. Mr. Blues. Ms. Crosby. Mr. DeCamp. Mr. Ellinger. Here. Ms. Gorton. Here. Mr. Gray. Here. Ms. Henson. Here. Ms. James. Here. Mr. Lane. Here. Mr. McCord. Here. And Mr. Myers. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum present. We had uh, a minister scheduled to be here tonight. Un unfortunately, I don't believe he has arrived. Um, Reverend McCown. Reverend McCown is not here, is he? All right, we'll call upon our uh, substitute, Deacon Green. Let's all stand, please. Hopefully a good substitute. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to assemble to do the, the business that you put before us, knowing that you've ordained government. We pray that as we go into these deliberations, that every heart will think and focus upon the benefit and what is most beneficial for our community that we come together to consider these decisions knowing that we are not perfect people, but we are trying to do what is right in that sight. Thank you and bless everyone assembled here. In the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you and bless. Amen. Thank you very much, Hardy. We're now ready for the ordinances entitled a second reading. Madam Clerk. Ordinances for second reading, ordinance number one, an ordinance changing the zone from a highway service business B3 zone to a professional office P1 zone for 3.12 net, 3.70 gross acres and from a professional office P1 zone to a highway service business B3 zone for 7.47 net, 12.38 gross acres of property located at 3194 Beaumont Center Circle, a portion of and 3100, 3101, and 3110 Wall Street, subject to certain use restrictions imposed as conditions of granting the zone change, Beaumont Investments, LLC. Number two, an ordinance of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Council, A, authorizing the issuance of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Adjustable Rate Industrial Re Building Revenue Bonds, Series 2008, Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington Project, and the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $5 million, the bonds, B, approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of one, a trust indenture between the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government, the issuer, and the Bank of New York Trust Company, and A, as trustee securing the bonds, two, a loan agreement between the issuer and Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington, the diocese, three, a bond purchase agreement among the issuer, the diocese, and the Fifth Third Securities Incorporated, four, a tax compliance agreement between the issuer and the diocese. Five, a preliminary offering circular and an offering circular relating to the issuance and sale of the bonds. And six, any and all other related documents. And C, otherwise authorizing the taking of other related action. And there's a public hearing. Thank you. Uh, in connection with the ordinance just uh, receiving its second reading by the clerk, we're required to have a public hearing this evening. Does anyone wish to speak to the uh, ordinance involving the industrial revenue bonds. Seeing none, we'll adjourn the public hearing. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number three, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an engineering services agreement with Camp Dresser and McKee Incorporated for sewer system capacity assessment work, hydraulic modeling, and related material matters at a cost not to exceed $2,827,319 in appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 148 and Number 4, an ordinance amending certain of the budgets of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government to reflect current requirements for municipal expenditures and appropriating and reappropriating funds, Schedule Number 147. Madam Clerk, I have item three on my screen. I don't know if uh, there's some change that needs to be. All right. 
That completes the reading of the ordinances entitled to their second reading. Uh, is there a motion? Move approval. Aye. Second. Councilmember Blevins has moved and Councilmember Stevens has second uh, that those ordinances be approved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's proceed to vote. Those in favor, please vote aye electronically. Those opposed, vote nay electronically. And Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Dr. Stevens? Aye. Mr. Stinnett? Yes, Mr. Blevins? Aye. Mr. Blues? Yes. Ms. Crosby? Yes. Mr. DeCamp? Yes. Mr. Ellinger? Yes. Ms. Gorton? Aye. Mr. Gray? Yes. Ms. Henson? Yes. Ms. James? Yes. Mr. Lane? Mr. McCord? Yes. And Mr. Myers? Yes. Thank you. Those ordinances are approved. That takes us down to the ordinances uh, entitled to first reading. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number five, an ordinance change in the zone from a highway service business B3 zone to a light industrial I1 zone for 0 0.78 net, 1.12 gross acre of property located at 990 through 992 West New Circle Road, hands-on originals. Number six, an, origin, an ordinance Change in the zone from a single-family residential R1D zone to a single-family residential R1E zone for 0 0.269 net, 0 0.366 gross acre of property located at 317 Robertson Street, Derek Thomas. Number seven, an ordinance amending Article 1-11 and Article 8-15D, 8-15N, and 8-15O of the zoning ordinance to change the definition of extended stay hotel and to permit extended stay hotels in the professional office P1 zone. Number eight, an ordinance amending Article 22A, 22A-1, and 22A-2 of the Zoning Ordinance to change the name of the Growth Area Planned Unit Development PUD-1 Zone to Residential Planned Unit Development PUD-1 Zone and to reduce the location and size criteria for the Planned Unit Development PUD-1 Zone. Number nine, an ordinance accepting the bid of MAC Construction and Excavating Incorporated in the amount of $1,178,972.60 for the Meadows Northland Arlington Neighborhood Improvements Phase 3B and appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 155. Number 10, an ordinance pursuant to Ordinance Number 197-2002 adjusting the salaries of employees occupying the position of Engineering Technician Principal, Telecommunicator, Telecommunicator Senior, Telecom Supervisor, Computer Analyst and Equipment Operator Senior in various divisions after review pursuant to the Pay Equity Ordinance, effective retroactive to the dates described in each item and appropriating funds pursuant to Budget Schedule Number 150. Number 11, an ordinance authorizing and directing the Mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to accept a grant from the Knight Foundation at Bluegrass Community Foundation, which grant funds are in the amount of $4,000 are for operation of a life skills program at the Division of Youth Services, the acceptance of which does not obligate the Urban County Government for the expenditure of funds, appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 153, and authorizing the Mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number 12, an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 4-2008 to create one position of Recreation Specialist Senior, Grid 113E, in the Division of Parks and Recreation to become effective retroactive to January 10, 2008. Number 13, an ordinance submitting Section 3 of Ordinance Number 3-2008 to correct an error in the salary of Kenneth Johnson, Equipment Operator Senior, Grade 109N from $9.855 $9 hourly to $14.359 hourly, effective retroactive to January 10, 2008, and pursuant to the Pay Equity Ordinance, adjusting the salaries of employees occupying the position of Equipment Operator Senior in the Division of Waste Management to become effective retroactive to October 15, 2007, and appropriating funds pursuant to Budget Schedule Number 152. Number 14, an ordinance amending Section 23.5 of the Code of Ordinances, abolishing one position of police captain and creating one position of police lieutenant in the Division of Police. Number 15, an ordinance amending certain of the budgets of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government to reflect current requirements for municipal expenditures and appropriating and reappropriating funds, Schedule Number 149. And Number 16, an ordinance submitting certain of the budgets of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government to reflect current requirements for municipal expenditures and appropriating and reappropriating funds remaining in FY 2007 and to FY 2008 in the General Services District General Fund using anticipated bond budget savings as the funding source is approved at the March 18, 2008 Council Work Session Schedule Number 154. Thank you very much. If there are no motions with regard to those ordinances, we'll proceed to the reading of uh, resolutions entitled to second reading. Madam Clerk. 
Resolution number one, a resolution accepting the bid of Scheller's Fitness and Cycling, establishing a price contract for bicycles for emergency medical services. Number two, a resolution accepting the bid of Arnold Dugan and Myers in the amount of $590,000 for West Hickman Wastewater Treatment Plant Aerated Sludge Holding Tank Improvements for the Division of Water and Air Quality. Number three, a resolution accepting the bid of Muse Electric Company Incorporated in the amount of $19,865 for the Detention Center Electrical Supply Expansion for the Divisions of Community Development and Community Corrections. Number four, a resolution accepting the bids of Anaconda Sports Incorporated, Sports Supply Group Incorporated, doing business as BSN Sports, Collegiate Pacific, S&S Worldwide, Riddell Flag House Incorporated, MSA Management, Adstar, and Bill Fritz Sports Corporation, establishing price contracts for athletic equipment. Number five, a resolution accepting the bid of Bluegrass Fire Equipment, establishing a price contract for fire hose nozzles. Number six, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreement with EHI Incorporated for consulting services for the East End Small Area Plan at a cost not to exceed $100,000. Number seven, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an amendment to agreement with Community Action Council of Lexington, Fayette, Bourbon, Harrison, and Nicholas Counties Incorporated for an extension of the agreement for use of home investment partnership program funds for a tenant-based rental assistance program to June 30, 2009 at no additional cost to the urban county government. Number eight, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute change order number one to the contract with Bluegrass Contracting Corporation for the Meadows Northland Arlington Public Improvements Project Phase 2C, decreasing the contract price by the sum of $36,038.83 from $1,052,532.52 to $1,016,493.69. Number nine, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute change order number one to the contract with HDR Quest Engineers Incorporated for Star Shoot Parkway Extension Project, increasing the pro contract price by the sum of $1,125 from $106,500 to $107,625. Number 10, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute change order number two to the contract with CDP Engineers Incorporated for South Elkhorn Pump Station Force Main Improvement Project, increasing the contract price by the sum of $33,500 from 454,000 to 487,500. Number 11, a resolution amending section two of resolution number 39, 2008, which approved the contract with Zumbelli Fireworks Manufacturing Corporation for July 4th, 2008 and 2009. Fireworks ex exhibitions to correct the amount payable pursuant to the contract. Number 12, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute and submit a grant application to the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security and to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application, which grant funds are in the amount of $23,893 federal funds and are for the purchase of a Rajant Instamesh breadcrumb deployable 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi wireless system for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services Mobile Command Post. Number 13. A resolution ratifying the permanent civil service appointments of Connie Machowski, Staff Assistant Senior Grade 108 in in the Division of Police, effective February 20th, 2008. Brian Reynolds, Laboratory Technician, Grade 109 in in the Division of Water and Air Quality, effective March 19, 2008. Matt Epperson, Golf Course Clubhouse Attendant, Grade 106 in in the Division of Parks and Recreation, effective April 1, 2008. Wilma Williams, Staff Assistant <coughs> Senior Grade 108 in in the Division of Police, effective February 20th, 2008. Lincoln Mackey, an engineering technician senior, grade 113E in the Division of Engineering, effective March 4, 2008. Alita Rados, administrative specialist senior, grade 112N in the Division of Felony Services, effective February 20, 2008. Ratifying the probationary sworn appointments of Franklin Patrick, Kevin Matcalf, April Crickard, Mick Crickard, Jones Hyatt, Jason Yeager, James Lowe, police sergeant, grade 315N, 26.388 hourly in the Division of Police, effective uh, February 18, 2008. Approving the leave of absence for Michael Rowland, equipment operator, senior, grade 109N in the Division of Waste Management, a request a 90-day council approved leave without pay from January 15, 2008 to April 13, 2008. Number 14, a resolution of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government authorizing the issuance of a of up to eight. $8,500,000 principal amount of Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Adjustable Rate Demand Industrial Building Revenue Bonds Series 2008 Northeast Christian Project 
authorizing the execution and delivery of a loan agreement, authorizing the execution and delivery of a trust indenture securing such bonds, authorizing the execution and delivery of a tax regulatory agreement with respect to such bonds, authorizing the execution and delivery of a bond purchase agreement with respect to such bonds and other documents and taking other related action. We are obligated uh, with regard to resolution number 14 to hold a public hearing uh, concerning those industrial revenue bonds. So uh, let me call the public hearing to order. Is there anyone who wishes to speak with regard to those bo proposed bonds? Seeing none, we'll uh, adjourn the public hearing. Madam Clerk. Resolution number 15, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute and submit a grant application to the Kentucky Environmental and Public Protection Cabinet and to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application, which grant funds are in the amount of $203,250 Commonwealth of Kentucky funds from the Kentucky Recycling Household Hazardous Waste and Mercury Management Grant Program and are for the purchase of a glass cleaning system in order to offer a new one-sort recycling system. Number 16, a resolution authorizing and directing the Division of Traffic Engineering pursuant to Code of Ordinances Section 18-86 to install multi-way stop controls at Topeka Road and Hillendale Road. Number 17, a resolution amending Section 1 of Resolution Number 13, 2008, establishing a price contract for wireless phone service with Cricket Communications to correct clerk error in the name of the vendor. Number 18, a resolution amending Section 1 of Resolution Number 33, 2008, establishing a price contract for hydraulic oil with Elite Petroleum Incorporated to correct a clerical error in the identification of the vendor. Yes. Number 19, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute three claims payment agreements with Humana Insurance Company for employee health insurance claims, Platinum PPO, Gold PPO, and Silver HDHP for the period of January 1, 2008 through December 31, 2008, at a cost not to exceed $28,903,620. Number 20, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreements with Mintel Neighborhood Association Incorporated $1,000 and Fairway Neighborhood Association Incorporated $200 for the office of the urban county council at a cost not to exceed <coughs> the sum stated. And number 21, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a second amendment to client engagement agreement with Metaformers Incorporated to provide for the implementation of the PeopleSoft modules for treasury projects, grants, and contracts, and to extend the term of the agreement through November 30, 2008 at an additional cost not to exceed $641,161 with an effective date of February 1, 2008. Thank you. That completes the reading, second reading of uh, the resolutions entitled to second reading. Is there a motion? I move approval of the second reading of the resolutions. Thank you. Councilmember Stevens has moved the approval of those resolutions. Councilmember Myers has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's proceed to vote. Those in favor, please vote aye electronically. Those opposed, vote nay electronically. And Madam Clerk, if you will call the roll. Dr. Stevens. Aye. Mr. Stinnett. Mr. Beard. Mr. Aye. Levins. Aye. Mr. Blues. Yes. Ms. Crosby. Yes. Mr. DeCamp. Yes. Mr. Ellinger. Yes. Ms. Gorton. Aye. Mr. Gray. Yes. Ms. Henson. Yes. Ms. James. Yes. Mr. Lane. Yes. Mr. McCord. Yes. And Mr. Myers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those resolutions are approved. Madam Clerk, if you would give first reading to uh, the resolutions entitled to first reading. Resolution number 22, a resolution accepting the bid of VSA Incorporated in the amount of $32,964 for production switcher for GTV3. Number 23, a resolution accepting the bid of Vogel Pole Fire Equipment establishing a price contract for heavy duty power rescue tools for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services. Number 24, a resolution accepting the bid of ANA Safety Incorporated establishing a price contract for hydraulic USAR rescue tools HD for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services. Number 25, a resolution accepting the bid of Choice Equipment LLC establishing a price contract for automotive lifts for the Division of Fleet Services. Number 26, a resolution accepting the bid of Central Seal Company establishing a price contract for raised payment marker installation for the Division of Traffic Engineering. Number 27, a resolution accepting the bid of Emergency Equipment establishing a price contract for high pressure airlifting bag system and accessories for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services. Number 28, a resolution accepting the bid of G&K Services, establishing a price contract for uniform rental for the Division of Fleet Services. 
Number 29, a resolution accepting the bid of Superior Demolition Incorporated in the amount of $20,400 for the demolition of residential structures for the Division of Community Development. Number 30, a resolution accepting the bid of EasyGo Textron in the amount of $310,910 for golf carts for the Division of Parks and Recreation. Number 31, a resolution accepting the bid of Tim Garnett, LLC, in the amount of $21,005 for Jacobson Park New Accessible Restroom. Number 32, a resolution accepting the bid of Thorough Built Construction in the amount of $29,875 for the Gratz Park Kitchen Roof Replacement. Number 33, a resolution accepting the bid of Pathmaster Incorporated, establishing a price contract for traffic, con traffic signal controllers for the Division of Traffic Engineering. Number 34, a resolution accepting the bids of Clonch Construction, LLC, G&G &G Paving and Construction Incorporated, LM Asphalt Partners Limited, Limited doing business as ATS Construction, Randall Davies Construction Company, The Allen Company Incorporated, Tom Chestnut Excavation and Construction, LLC, and Woodall Construction Company Incorporated, establishing price, unit price contracts for paved trail construction for the Division of Engineering. Number 35. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an amendment to agreement with Hope Center Incorporated for an increase of $460 for a total of $25,180 in emergency shelter grant funds for operation of an emergency and transitional shelter for men at a cost not to exceed an additional $460. Number 36, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and to accept a general warranty deed for the property located at 405 Shawnee Avenue from James and Janet Eastep for the Meadows Northland Arlington Phase 3B improvements and authorizing payment in the amount of 53000 plus usual and appropriate closing cost. Number 37, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and to accept a general warranty deed for the property located at 406 Shawnee Avenue from D2H Investments, LLC for the Meadows Northland Arlington Phase 3B improvements and improve, authorizing a payment in the amount of $53,000 plus usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 38, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to accept a donation from the Jesmond County Emergency Management Agency of 24 emergency scene ahead signs with base and carrying case for use at the Division of Environmental and Emergency Management at no cost to the Urban County Government. Number 39, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute agreements with Boy Scout Troop 911 Incorporated, $1,000, Radcliffe, Radcliffe Marble Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $578, Joylin Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $420, and Winburn Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $600 for the Office of the Urban County Council at a cost not to exceed the sums stated. Number 40, a resolution ratifying the probationary civil service appointments of Kenzie Gleason, Planner Senior, Grade 117E, 1691-84, biweekly in the Division of Planning, mar effective March 17, 2008. John Saylor, Arborist, Technician, Grade 112N, 18.922, hourly in the Division of Streets, Roads, and Forestry, effective March 17, 2008. Ratifying the permanent civil service appointments of Philip Stifel, Computer <laughs> Systems Manager Senior, Grade 120E in the Division of Computer Services, effective April 1, 2008. Wally Barker, Human Resources Manager, Grade 119E in the Division of Human Resources, effective March 3, 2008. Wil Wilma Williams, Staff Assistant Senior, Grade 108N in the Division of Police, effective February 20, 2008. Scott Bittner, Public Service Worker, Grade 106N in the Division of Parks and Recreation, effective April 1, 2008. Kathleen O'Neill, Administrative Specialist, Grade 110N in the Division of Historic Preservation, effective March 17, 2008. Aaron Bach, Golf Horse Clubhouse Attendant, Grade 106N in the Division of Parks and Recreation, effective April 1, 2008. Approving the unclassified civil service appointment of Carissa Kelsey, Family Support Worker, Grade 112N, 16.341 hourly in the Division of Family Services, effective February 28, 2008, approving the unclassified civil service appointment of the, to the Office of the Urban County Council, Mary Tackett, aide to council, grade 000E, 1080769, biweekly in the Office of the Urban County Council, effective February 25th, 2008. Number 41, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute and submit a grant application to the Kentucky Justice and Public Safety Cabinet and to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application, which grant funds are in the amount of $187,500 federal funds and are for continuation of the street sales drug enforcement project. Number 42, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government 
to execute and submit a grant application to the Kentucky Justice and Public Safety Cabinet and to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application, which grant funds are in the amount of $35,000 Commonwealth of Kentucky funds from the Law Enforcement Service Fee Program and are for police officer overtime hours for a traffic alcohol patrol program. Number 43, a resolution accepting the proposal of express personnel services in the amount of $20.15 per hour, not to exceed $30,000 for an inventory warehouse specialist to maintain current inventory and control system for metropolitan medical response systems related equipment purchases. Number 44, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent storm sewer and temporary construction easements from East End Church of Christ, Inc. for property located at 3055 Tides Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project and authorizing payment in the amount of $15,500 plus usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 45, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from our house on Todd's LLC located at 3021 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 46, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Daniel Morton, Webster III, located at 3041 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 47, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Michael Height, located at 3045 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 48. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Jeffrey S. Leonard located at 3017 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 49. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from our house on Todd's LLC located at 3051 Todd's Road out for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 50. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Courtney S. Burton located at 3073 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 51, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute change order number two, final, to the contract with Lenco Excavation Incorporated for 7th Street at Old Railroad Improvement Project, increasing the contract price by the sum of $3,952.23 from $249,130.97 to $253,083.20. Number 52, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreement with Ratio Architects Incorporated for a central sector small area plan at a cost not to exceed $110,000. Number 53, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute agreements with Project Lifesaver Incorporated, $825, and Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Bluegrass Incorporated, $825 for the office of the urban county council at a cost not to exceed the sums stated. Number 54, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreement with Chenault Road Neighborhood Association Incorporated $4,999 for a public project for the Office of the Urban County Council at a cost not to exceed the sum stated. Number 55, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an encroachment agreement with the Cincinnati, New Orleans, and Texas Pacific Railway Company for the El North Elkhorn Wastewater Treat Project at a cost not to exceed $24,625. Number 56, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a consulting services agreement with Metaformers Incorporated for implementation services for PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft Software Phase 2 at a cost not to exceed $4,326,790. And number 57, a resolution making a declaration of official intent with respect to reimbursement from subsequent borrowings of temporary advances made for capital expenditures for implementation of Phase 2 of the PeopleSoft Software Stars expansion in an approximate amount of $5,500,000. Thank you very much. That completes 
the reading of the resolutions entitled to first reading. Are there any motions? I see Council Member Stennett. Yes, Mayor. I, I need, I'd like to give second reading to number 33 because the price contract is expiring soon and we need to get a new one in place for our traffic signals, as well as resolutions 44 through 50. This is a project that's been going on for two years and it means uh, sanitary sewer service to this area. So this will help speed up that process just a little bit to get the sewer in there faster. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none, I have a motion to suspend the rules to give second reading to uh, resolutions number 33 and resolutions 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Is there, uh, I have a second from uh, Council Member Ellinger. Thank you. Those in favor of suspending the rules, please uh, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Mo motion carries. Madam Clerk. <laughs> Madam Clerk. <laughs> Do I take that as a unanimous vote or one nay? Thank you. I'll record that. Resolution number 33. A resolution accepting the bid of Pathmaster Incorporated establishing a price contract for traffic signal controllers for the Division of Traffic Engineering. Number 44, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent storm sewer and temporary construction easements from the East End Church of Christ Incorporated for property located at 3055 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project and authorizing payment in the amount of $15,500 plus usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 45, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Our House on Todd's LLC, located at 3021 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the Urban County Government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 46, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Daniel Morton Webster III, located at 3041 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the Urban County Government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 47, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed for conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Michael Height, located at 3045 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the Urban County Government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 49, or 48, excuse me, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government uh, to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from Jeffrey S. Leonard, located at 3017 Todd's Road for the Caden Town Sanitary Sewer Project at no cost to the Urban County Government with usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 49, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from our house on Todd's LLC, located at 3051 Todd's Road for the Caden Town sanitary sewer project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs and number 50 a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement from courtney s burton located at 3073 todd's road for the caden town sanitary sewer project at no cost to the urban county government with usual and appropriate closing costs thank you very much that completes the reading is there a motion to approve those resolutions so moved. Councilmember Blevins has moved, and I think Councilmember DeCamp seconded that those resolutions be approved. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor of approving resolutions 33 and 44 through 50, please indicate by voting aye electronically. Those opposed, vote nay. And Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Dr. Stevens. I got your vote. Mr. Stinnett. <laughs> Mr. Stinnett. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Beard. Aye. Mr. Blevins. Yes. Mr. Blues. Yes. Ms. Crosby. Yes. 
Mr. DeCamp? Yes. Mr. Ellinger? Yes. Ms. Gorton? Aye. Mr. Gray? Aye. <laughs> Ms. Henson? Yes. Ms. James? Yes. Mr. Lane? Yes. Mr. McCord? Yes. And Mr. Myers? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those resolutions are approved. That concludes our ordinances and resolutions for the evening. There are a few communications from the mayor. A motion to approve those would be in order. I have a motion by Council Member DeCamp, second by Council Member McCord, that the communications from the mayor be approved. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The communications are approved. There are a number of uh, communications for information purposes only. I'll leave those to your, uh, to your uh, reading. Are there any announcements? Seeing none, we'll proceed to public comment. And I think we have a list of folks who wish to address the council here. Thank you. The only uh, individual who has signed up indicating a desire to speak is Diana Butler. So, Ms. Butler, if you would go to the podium. I have your address as uh, 1700 Parker's Mill, and you'll have three minutes, ma'am. Diana Butler, 1700 Parker's Mill Road. As a Fayette County resident, a registered voter, a taxpayer, an urban county government employee, and the CSEA representative for Family Services, I come before you to voice my concerns in regard to the mayor's proposal to not grant pay raises to those urban county government employees <coughs> who do not have collective bargaining rights. LFUCG is a public entity, not a private business. LFUCG provides services for the citizens of Fayette County, important and vital services. Yes, I do agree that there exist more efficient and effective ways in which these services can be delivered. Yes, these times do require that the mayor and the council be held accountable for the most economical manner in which to deliver these services to the citizens. But does this justify not giving a world at work pay raise to those employees who are not represented by a union? The majority of such employees are residents of Fayette County, are registered voters, all certainly are taxpayers, and most have decided to make public service a chosen profession. As those employees who have collective bargaining abilities continue to receive annual pay raises, annual increases to the benefits pool, and other perks, the remainder of the urban county government employees are at the mercy of the mayor and you council members to grant any pay raise, any increase in the benefit pool, and any perks that may come our way. We civil servants do provide necessary and vital services to the citizens of Fayette County. Please remember this as you consider the annual budget. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Uh, let me just advise the council, the mayor hasn't made any proposal one way or the other yet and won't be doing so until the budget is presented on April 8th, but uh, just wanted to clarify that so that anybody that may be listening will not be confused. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Commander? I believe it's Commander now, is that right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Sincere. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have four letters of conformity assigned by Chief Baston and Commissioner Bennett brought to you on disciplinary issues for the police department. The first is an allegation with the uh, officer Matthew Gordon in uh, committing the offense of operation of a safe vehicle in violation of General Order 73-2H. It is alleged on the fourth day of January 2008, the officer proceeded to a dispatch call of shots fired with emergency equipment activated. Officer Jordan lost control of his cruiser, struck a light pole. Officer Jordan's operation of his vehicle exceeded the limitations of conditions and his unsafe operation of the vehicle was the sole contributing factor in the collision. Officer Jordan was also not wearing his seat belt at the time when he was responding to the call as required by state law. Officer Jordan has signed a letter of conformity and received a 10 hour suspension without pay and loss of home fleet privileges for 40 hours. Move approval. I have a motion by Council Member Gordon and a second by Council Member McCord to approve the recommendation. Any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The second uh, letter of conformity is on behalf of Officer Jeremy Brislin regarding at-fault collisions and according to General Order 73-2H, Section 140, on multiple days from 2007 to 2008, he has been involved in three at-fault collisions during the last 12 months in which he has been at fault. The details of the collisions are listed below. Officer Brislin has received retraining and letters of counseling regarding this. He has received a written reprimand, loss of home fleet privileges for 40 hours, and been instructed to uh, retraining. Second. I have a motion by Council Member DeCamp and a second by Council Member Gorton to approve the recommendation. Any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. The third agreement of conformity, sir, is an allegation from Officer David Lloyd Lunsford uh, in regard to the offense of incompetence, General Order 73-2G, Section 1.1. On various days of March, November 2007, the officer has shown an inability or unwillingness to perform assigned task as Receive written record of repeated infractions or rules, regulations, manuals, or directions as demonstrated by a written reprimand for incompetence stemming from a traffic stop in which a formal complaint was filed. He was issued a letter of counseling for failing to uh, formal inspection and failing to report damage to his police cruiser. Issued a letter of counseling for failing to turn in monthly activity on time and being notified by email and during several roll calls. Issued a letter of counseling for failure to report to duty on time twice in a month, and an officer was needed to report to his home to check his status, and he was removed from the Spanish class due to his disruptive behavior, in which included uh, poking other officers during class and constant talking, which interfered with other officers' ability to learn, and he's also failed to turn in assignments and made no effort to make up the work. He has received a 40-hour suspension without pay, and 60 days of intense supervision upon his return. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Myers and a second by Council Member Gordon to approve, to approve the uh, recommendation. Uh, any discussion, Council Member Blues? Commander, uh, just a question here. If, if an officer is deemed incompetent, wouldn't that really merit a, a, you know, a more significant penalty even to you know, to dismissal. I mean, if uh, I'm not sure how how then this term is defined and whether incompetence can be corrected. Yes, sir. I, I, I think Chief Baston is currently looking at the verbiage of that in the disciplinary code that we have. Uh, I think originally it was set up as incompetence, and that's a large scale that you look at. And some of the minor infractions that fall under that are labeled as incompetence, and he's uh, currently looking at changing that so they can address it further. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of approving the proposed uh, discipline, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The last allegation is also incompetence, Officer Benjamin Limp. On various occasions through June 2007 through January 2008, failed to f sufficiently perform his duties as demonstrated by the following. Mishandled evidence that resulted in the evidence being lost. Officer Limp received a written reprimand. On 12-10-07, he failed to sign out a court attendance form as required by policy. The form was sent back to Officer Limp for proper documentation at the time he left court. On 1808, he failed to complete a cocaine field test form that had been sent back for correction. Officer Limp received a letter of counseling. 1808, Lieutenant Hart contacted by pretrial service informing Officer Limp attempted to obtain a bond reduction for a suspect. Officer Limp did so to have the suspect work as a confidential informant. Officer Limp failed to contact a supervisor or obtain proper prosecutorial, excuse me, approval before requesting a bond reduction for the suspect. And on 11108, Officer Limp failed to contact the county attorney's office in a prompt manner if they attempted to call him reference several court cases. Officer Limp received a letter of counseling. Officer Limp receives a 40-hour suspension without pay and mandatory employee assistance program. Is there a motion to approve? I move approval of the recommendation. Second. Council Member Stevens has moved to approve the recommendation. Council Member Gordon has seconded. Any discussion? Those in favor then vote aye. aye. Opposed no. 
Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Thank you very Council. much, Commander. Uh, Councilmember McCord. Just a general comment. Uh, I know over the last three years, certain council members have had this discussion on, on evenings such as this when we hear um, conduct with, with police and fire. And, and uh, I, I see the, I hear what you had to say about uh, union versus non union. And I think that uh, I would ask Mayor that, that Chief Baston take a, a, and Chief Hendricks both take a very hard look at uh, the disciplinary actions that can be taken. Uh, because these are two entities that we actually would hold to a higher standard. Uh, we hold them to a higher standard in, in uh, pay and benefits and everything, and I think that that's part of the, the frustration with, with uh, some folks in the audience. Uh, and I know it kind of pains me to vote yes on uh, some of these uh, disciplinary actions that I think are, are way too light. Um, we have one of the most phenomenal police departments in the country, and we continue to, to win awards, and, and uh, we hold them to very high standards. Um, and I think that, uh, that it's, it's very bothersome to kind of hear uh, slaps on the wrist or things that I know that the police can't do much further than what, what they uh, are bringing forward to us. But I would ask that we take a very long, hard look, and I would ask Chief Baston uh, if he, could, he and Chief Hendricks can take a look at, um, at these groups and the discipline that is offered uh, because I, I think this body and the citizens uh, and I think other employees would, would say that, uh, we do hold them to, to a higher standard in a lot of cases. So I just felt like we needed to get that on record. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember McCord. Uh, Commissioner Bennett, would you relay those sentiments to the chiefs for me, please? Thank you. Mr. Barnett. My name is Jack Barnett. I live at 211 McDowell Road. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the council members who deliberated on our request for the CSEA time. And I know you guys spent a lot of time because we sat here for one solid hour one night kicking it around and then you all had other meetings and I know you get bombarded sometimes from the employees and you think we don't appreciate you but we do because I know you all really have our best interests at heart and uh, you know we'll abide by the flex time and uh, just I want to thank all of you all. Thank you very much Mr. Barnett. Anyone else wish to address the council? My name is David Sams. I live at uh, 2853 Winter Garden Drive. And uh, I've given Ms. James a copy of the uh, House Bill 519, which was 614 in 06. And this bill, I don't think, has been brought before the council. And the question is why? Because I think that every piece of legislation that affects this government should be brought before the council and let them decide, yes, we will support it or we won't. So it is House Bill 519, and at this time it is in dire need of help in, in the House right now. I'm talking to Tom Buford, which may have something that he can uh, tag it to on the Senate. So, you know, if we can get a support letter... Um, you know, a, approval from this council that, uh, yes, this is something that we want to support. You need to take a hard look of who you put in danger and who you protect and who you do not. You know, if you have deemed to clean up any spills, they're dressed head to toe. We collect this stuff every day with little and no protection. Hazards does not stop on our job when we retire. We carry them hazards along with us in retirement. So you need to think of these things and, and consider them because there's not just a few people that has those hazards in their, in their jobs. And I, I appreciate if y'all give us consideration and we need this letter right away. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Sams. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. I have a motion by Councilmember Myers and a second by Councilmember Crosby. Those in favor of adjourning, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you very much.